Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I am your host, Keisha King, where, and you can find me at the Crossroads every Wednesday, live at five. You can find us on Facebook at the Think Tech Hawaii channel, and you can find me at thinktechhawaii.com. And after the show, you can find me at the, on YouTube at the Think Tech Hawaii channel and on the At The Crossroads playlist. You should like and subscribe there so you can catch me every week and watch it over and over and over again. I want to thank you all for being with me each week where we keep all of our shows real and relevant. We have conversations with some of the most amazing people throughout, throughout Hawaii and throughout the country, even abroad. Today is no exception to that. We have the wonderful privilege, honor, and just sheer joy of sharing with someone who's making a huge difference in Hawaii as we celebrate International Women's Month, National Women's Month. We have International Women's Day coming up this Friday, May 8th, I'm sorry, March 8th. 2019, where women all over the world will celebrate just everything female related, all of our accomplishments, where we are now and where we hope to go. And today, our show is entitled Women in Power. Beyonce said it so well, who runs the world? Girls. We're going to talk about all the women who've made significant, or as many women as we can fit in 30 minutes, who have made a significant difference. And today we have a very powerful woman who is going to share with us. We have none other than civil rights attorney, Daphne E. Barbie Wooten. Hello, Daphne. Aloha to you. Aloha. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for inviting and having me. It is totally my pleasure and it's my honor. I have to tell you, I am a little bit nervous because <laughs> you are such a powerful, fierce woman. Indeed you are. And you look amazing. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, just a little bit about what I'm wearing. I am curious. You chose white. Why? Well, if you recall, um, th first of all, this is a very historic time in the United States history. We have a record number of women in Congress and in the Senate. If you recall, um, during the State of the Union address, many of them, uh, Congresswomen and Senator females, wore white. And many people didn't know why. And so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you why. Please do. <laughs> for the suffragettes that fought for the right for women to vote. And that's in the 19th Amendment, which was only enacted in 1920. You know, mm. that's not that long ago when you think about it. Not It'll be all. 100 years next year. Yes. Um, in 2020. Mm -hmm. But it was actually 1919. It was ratified, and then uh, Congress passed it in 1920. And mm -hmm. so many of the women who fought for the women's right to vote wore white. So right. the women who were out there in the Congress and Senate wore white to commemorate and the historic significance of women fighting for the right to vote, and not only getting the right to vote, but for voting and for actually becoming politicians and elected officials. And as we know, even um, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, no, Pelosi, I'm sorry, okay. she is the first female Speaker of the House. Yes. It's in our lifetime. That's right. We Life. are witnesses mm -hmm. to history in the making. Right. With her in, in that position, it is a great honor just as a woman. Right. And the work that she's doing, it's been phenomenal. It is very powerful. Um, yeah. She's the third in line to the presidency. That's right. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is really, really historic. So, yes, yeah, truly, truly. Right. So women's suffrage um, is what amendment was that now? 19th, 19th. Amendment. 19th. Yes. Okay, so we're going to spend some time talking about that a little bit later on in the show. Okay. Right now, I want you to take us down to a deeper part of history. Let's talk about ancient history. Yes. And some of our ancient queens. Yes, absolutely. We have to start with Mother Africa because all of human beings and all of life was in Africa. So one could say we are all Africans. That's right. Many want to deny it, but mm -hmm. Lucy mm -hmm. is in Ethiopia. Okay. It was discovered in Ethiopia. And so we have pictures. Uh, yes, uh, okay. I'd like to um, talk about some of the powerful women um, 
that we should know, begin to know, and mm -hmm. do know, and we'll know after you hear after this show. This. <laughs> the first one, I believe it's Queen Nzinga. We have a picture of her. There she is right there. All Beautiful. right. Queen Nzinga is from Angola. Okay. Um, during her lifetime, the Portuguese decided to colonize the area which is now known as Angola. Mm -hmm. Queen Nzinga fought against the Portuguese colonization. Uh, the Portuguese were one of the first uh, exporters of slave for slavery, mm -hmm. and they chose Angola, and they started to uh, kidnap um, and steal Africans, bring them to the Caribbean, bring them to America, um, bring them as slaves. And mm -hmm. Queen Nzinga said, we need to stop this. Her uh, brother, who was the king, was stolen and uh, put into slavery by the Portuguese. And so after he got taken for slavery, she said, nope, we're going to round up. And she rounded up not just women, but men, and mm -hmm. started to fight against the Portuguese. She killed many Portuguese who were there. Um, she stopped many a person from being a slave. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, eventually she was captured. Um, mm -hmm. But she's a heroine. Yes. And we all should revere her name. We should look up more information about Queen Nzinga in Angola. There are statues of Queen Nzinga in her honor. And so... Uh, He's one of the people we're going to talk about today. Right. The second is my personal favorite. If you can actually <laughs> pick a favorite, Sorry. this is Pharaoh Hatshepsut. Okay. Now, That's our second picture. Yes. Here. I didn't say queen because she wasn't a queen. She was a pharaoh. What okay. does pharaoh mean? The seat of power. The I seat see. of power. Um, mm -hmm. They call it king in, in mm -hmm. English vernacular, but mm -hmm. it's actually pharaoh, the seat of power. Okay. And. Um, she ruled Egypt in mm -hmm. the 18th dynasty. Uh, through her rule, she, uh, it was a time of peace. Instead of uh, embarking on war with neighbors, such as Nubia, uh, Sudan, um, what she did is she entered peace treaties, and they went, entered into trade with each other. So it was, it was a time of prosperity in Egypt. Okay. Um, Queen Hatshepsut also was a builder. And um, they say her lover was her main architect. And he would build these outstanding, phenomenal temples. Mm. And if you go to Egypt today, you will go across the Nile to the Valley of the Kings, not Queens, Valley of the Kings, and you will see this amazing um, uh, building. In, it's Hatshepsut's building. And it has columns. It has um, architect. Uh, mm -hmm. It's one of the world wonders of architectural wonders. Mm -hmm. It has statues of Hathor, the goddess of love, of yes. beauty, and art yes. all over it. Um, so it, it, it's, it's made out of marble, mm -hmm. and um, it, it's just an amazing, amazing building in honor of Pharaoh Hatshepsut. And they say they have not found her body yet in her tomb, had they have not found her tomb. Some people say, oh, well, it was hidden somewhere else, and... Some people mm. say they discovered it, but uh -huh. there has been no definitive um, finding of her. But she was uh, very well known, and you will see mm -hmm. obelisks in the Temple of Amun-Ra that she built. You will see um, they're made out of pink marble, and wow. the statue that I showed you was um, made out of pink marble as well, and we got it from the Cairo Museum, took the picture in the Cairo Museum. I think this is so fascinating, but I'm a little bit disturbed because we're both highly educated women, especially you. <laughs> <laughs> you too. <laughs> All of this ancient history that I have learned about, I've never heard of these two women. And I think we go without, it goes without saying that a lot of this history is not taught in school. Mm -hmm. But I did learn a lot about the history of that time, and yet I still didn't know about these two women. Well, you know, actually, I went to, I was a lawyer at the time, and we went to Egypt. And that's how I found out more about Pharaoh Hatshepsut. And I, I was like you, I was in shock. Why wasn't I taught this in college? Why wasn't I taught this in high school? Yes. Um, and so dig more de deeply, and they know about Pharaoh Hatshepsut in Egypt. I see. But in America, they don't. But there are some people, historians and historians, that are doing books now about Fair Hatshepsut. And I think you mentioned a book that you're reading now that has right. something about her. I am. I am. The, it, the book that I'm reading, and I want to say this to my book club followers, <laughs> uh, I try to read about a book and a half a week. And Good I want to say that this book that I'm currently reading, where I did find out about her, is called When Women Ruled the World. I don't think it ever stopped, but it talks about <laughs> six ancient 
Queens. And so I don't have the author's name right now, but I will find it off camera. And I'll mention it again at the end of our show. But it's so amazing that you can, education never has to stop. And so you can continue your education and move in the direction of continued learning. Right. So continue teaching. And you <laughs> should um, continue the education. Um, yes. You know, everybody's heard of Nefertiti. Right. But she wasn't a queen. And no. she was. Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing mm -hmm. compared to Farrah Hatshepsut. The real powerful women. Yes. And you can find them. Mm -hmm. But why don't they put them in the books in America? Who writes the books? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if yeah. I was writing the book, she'd be on the cover and she would be highlighted. So mm -hmm. you do have to dig deeper to find books that um, celebrate you, books right. that you can identify with, mm -hmm. um, and not just regular books that, that hide and cover up the deep history of women of color. That's right. Okay. All right. Moving on. Let's look at picture number three. All this right. one is really exciting to me. Yes, she is. She's a good one. Hey, there she is. Yeah, yeah, Shantiwa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shantiwa, let me tell you about this fierce woman. Talk about power. Um, she lived in the 1800s, well, late 1800s. Um, she died in the early 1900s, right about the time that the 19th Amendment became enacted in America. She's from Ghana, the Gold Coast. She's a Shanti queen. Queen Mother of the Ashantis. Here's, this, here's what happens in the Ashanti culture. There was a golden stool. Now, this golden stool um, wasn't something you, you could just sit on and, and you know, uh, do whatever you wanted to do on this stool. It was a symbol of the uh, royalty of the Ashantis. So it was passed from king to king to king. And the Queen Mother was the mother of the king who would designate who the next king would be. So it was a matrilineal society, even though the king was male. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Ashanti San. Oh, let me tell you. The British came to conquer Ghana, much as the Portuguese came to, con to conquer Angola. Mm -hmm. And um, they had, there had been several wars, the British wars with the Ashantis. And there's many stories about that. Mm -hmm. And um, in the late 1800s, a British major came to conquer Ghana again. And he decided he would take the golden stool. Well, that's a no-no. Yeah. That, that's the seat of power. And so he decided he would sit on it, which was extremely disrespectful. And uh, Yaya Shantiwa, the queen mother, said, no, you don't sit on this stool. Mm -hmm. And she ordered the people to hide the stool from the British. The British became upset. Um, they, they were going to kill all the Ashantis for not letting them have the golden stool. She said, you can't have it. Um, and the... King had been banished to the Seychelles Islands and by the uh, uh, British who had ca captured him and sent him away. And Ashanti Sarasat told the men who were there, if you don't go to war against these British, you don't take arms against them from taking our culture and taking our heritage away in our country, the mm -hmm. women will. And she got, you got that picture with her, the muskets? Yes. Those are her... Her ornaments, look at that. Wow, she That's is her armed and ready. Fierce, and, yep, armed and ready. And she said, come on, women. Women stood up, got their muskets, and they went to war with the British. After wow. the women started the war with the British, killed quite a few of them, including the major, um, then the men joined in. She so, said, while you men are talking, we're, nah, we're not going to talk. It's time for us to go so, fight the battle. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Because she said... Look, ladies, we can do this ourselves, right? Right. I love that. You know, you guys sit and talk all you want to. Right. I'm about the business. Right. She got down to business, down to the nitty gritty, and she went and she fought. And it's called The War of the um, Golden Stool. You can read about it. There's actually a couple of movies. I can't remember where they are, but okay. uh, there's actually movies about it. And we went to Ghana. Oh, let me tell you what happened to her. She did start the war. Okay. The, the war... A fierce battle ensued. Ghana mm -hmm. eventually became independent, unfortunately, not until 1959, wow. uh, when Kwame Nkrumah um, uh, took over and it became an independent country. Mm -hmm. However, she started the battle to do away with the British colony, British colonialists. They did capture her, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And in the 19, um, early 1900s, they sent her to Seychelles and she died there. I see. Uh, but 
We went to Ghana. We had the privilege of going to Ghana. That sounds good. This is going to be good. We're going to come right back. All right. Okay. So we will be right back at the crossroads. Thank you so much for watching. This is good. Make sure you come back and finish watching. <laughs> Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po. Mabuhay and aloha. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show. And it's streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. Aloha and welcome back. I am your host, Keisha King, and you're watching At the Crossroads. My guest today is a civil rights attorney, Daphne E. Barbie Wooten, and she is sharing with us about some great history. So we left off talking about Ghana and the yes. trip. Oh, yes, we went to, actually went to Ghana. We um, donated some books to the schools there in Ghana. And because we donated the books in the Ashanti region, we were actually able to meet the king of the Ashantis. Wow. Uh, we were able to meet his wife, the queen of the Ashantis. Uh, the wow. king is, is uh, an accountant. His wife is an attorney. Oh, wow. Um, but uh, we had a big feast, and we got to see the palace of the Ashantis, which is in Kumasi, Ghana. And we also got to see the museum that housed the golden stool. The golden stool. <laughs> we actually go, got to go into the museum. Of course, there are guards. Yes. And there was the golden stool, which caused, which wasn't the cause of the war, but which was part of the reason why the war began. And yeah. amongst other other gold accoutrement, golden spears, and all oh sorts of goodness. things, golden hats, and whew, just this sounds so is. rich, so regal, and yet they were just powerful people. Yeah, especially the women, and they have yes. a big statue, statute, of course, honoring the uh, Yaya Ashanti. As they should. As they should. But right. we can move on from Africa and uh, because there are powerful women it's not just in Africa, but in That's other right. parts of the world. And okay. one of them is the Caribbean, Jamaica. Jamaica. Yes. Excellent. Let's take us to Jamaica. We have a $500 bill from Jamaica right here. And I'm just so happy to show it. I'm happy to hold it. I'm happy to have it. <laughs> but it's not mine. Tell us all about this. Yeah, you have to go to Jamaica to spend that. I don't yeah. think they, that you they won't accept here. it here. <laughs> but... Um, the next uh, picture is of Nanny of the Maroons. Um, Nanny uh, was taken from Africa. They don't know whether it was Ghana, but they suspect it was Ghana because uh, the language that is used up in the mountains in Nanny Town are similar to the Ghanaian um, language. Mm -hmm. So anyways, uh, she was sold into slavery, brought to Jamaica. And while she was in Jamaica, um, slavery didn't suit her well. Uh, she didn't care for it. So uh, being from Ghana and a fierce woman warrior, whoo, um, <laughs> she galvanized a lot of the other slaves and they um, decided to run away what's called Sina Maroon or Maroons. Okay. And if you go to Jamaica now, you'll be able to go to Maroon County um, and Maroon Country, which is usually up, up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Nanny um, uh, not only ran away, but would help other um, African Caribbean people who were enslaved to escape slavery, um, you know, by fighting and um, burning down the plantations and running up into the hills. The British got so upset they had bounty um, on her head. Um, mm. She established a community where she was called Grand, Grandy Nanny. She is now one of the national heroines in Jamaica. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love it. So much like the stories we hear about Harriet Tubman, she yes. helped, helped herself and others, and she fought. Yes, she did. I love the fierceness of these women. And They're I'm waiting fearless. for Harriet Tubman to be on our dollar bill because we don't have any women of color on our dollar bills in America. But, hey, America, you can do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> want to see Harriet Tubman. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And I believe that, you know, our current president kind of pushed that back. It was supposed to happen with the Andrew Jackson Right, yeah. taking off. And, and Andrew Jackson, up. of course, is a, is a genocidal maniac who killed lots of Native Americans. 
right. genocide. Yeah. But Harry Tubman is not. She's a freedom fighter and she's a woman of color. That's right. Much like Nanny in Jamaica. Absolutely. All right. So who's next? Well, what I wanted to do is go into America right now, the United okay. States of America, and talk about um, the United States government at this moment. We have a historic number of women in Congress and in the Senate. And I actually Googled this to find out how many. Presently, in 2019, we have um, 25 female senators, including hmm. one from Hawaii, Maisie Hirono. That's right. We have um, 127 women in Congress, including one from Hawaii, Tulsi Gabbard. That's right. So Hawaii is representing in terms of uh, the female um, uh, percentages, shall we say. Right. I wouldn't say quota, but percentages, because mm -hmm. it's not a quota since women are 50% of America, so we should have 50% instead of these numbers, but in the future. That's right. We're plugging along. We are getting there. Yeah. And so a total of all is 127, which is 23% of the United States Senate. So yes. that's, that's getting there. That's right. And again, I, I think I mentioned that um, Senator Pelosi is the first U.S. Speaker of the House, first female U.S. Speaker of the House. And so that's good. And then I want to segue into Hawaii, if I may. Yes, you may. And uh, talk about some of the powerful women that existed and exist in our island, our state, Hawaii. First of all, Queen Liliokalani ruled Hawaii. She um, did. And for many years and... Unfortunately, she was overthrown by the United States military and the United States government, but we have to pay her respect because she was a powerful woman who ruled Hawaii. Yes. And then I'm going to segue off into some of the women who have served in um, political offices here. Okay. We've had four female mayors, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mayor Joan Yukimura from Kauai. Okay. Linda Lingo from Maui. Okay. Um, Eileen Anderson. Honolulu, and then of course my favorite is Helene Hale. And if you could show the next picture of Helene Hale, um, yes, she is a grand lady. Indeed. She is no longer with us, but she mm -hmm. was um, uh, uh, the first woman after Queen Lily Okalani to rule a major area of Hawaii, which was the Big Island. She was the county executive, which is the mayor now. It's called the mayor, but at the mm -hmm. time it was county executive. Okay. Um, and she's African American. She was on Ebony Magazine in 1963. And Wait, they stop wrote, right there. Yes. She was African American. Absolutely. Look at my face. Are you serious? I didn't know that. Well, let me tell you. Guess Please. who her uncle is? Who is her Ralph uncle? Ralph Bunch. Really? Yes. UN envoy and yeah, Ralph wow. historical figure, Ralph Bunch. That's her that. uncle. And so she came from the mainland with her husband and mm -hmm. um, eventually ran for county executive and one. Okay. She was one of the people that started the Mary Monarch. You want to know? She started the Mary Monarch with wow. the, Uncle George Naopi um, because they wanted tourists to come to the Big Island. And now yeah. it's just bombastic with tourists during That's the right. Mary Monarch. Um, she was quite a woman. She, mm -hmm. After she no longer became mayor or county executive, she ran for state representative at the ripe age of, I think it was 70. <laughs> but she won. Yes, she won. indeed. And not only did she win, but she campaigned in the swimming suit in the swimming pool at Pohoa, Pohoa wow. swimming pool. Wow. And so, you know, that, that caught a lot of people's attention sure. in her brochure. Yeah. And uh, she went on to serve with, with distinction in the legislature. We met her several times. And in fact, I have a picture of her giving her one of her last speeches. Um, so, yeah, we have that picture, too. She, I think there. she was in her 80s at that time. Mm -hmm. And she soon um, left the office. She had a stroke um, in mm -hmm. her late 80s and, okay. and later passed on. Okay. But um, she uh, was quite a figure and a go-getter in Hawaii politics. And then we also um, have uh, Donna Thompson, which I okay. want to talk about. All right. For That's women, another picture we have. Yeah, women who represent um, Hawaii, one of them was Congresswoman Patsy Mink. She okay. is well known for uh, getting Title IX passed, which says women athletes deserve the same amount of pay and funding as males. Well, it wasn't just Patsy Mink's idea. It was also Donna Thompson. We have a picture of her, a statute of her, which is the only statute of African-American in Hawaii at the Stan Sheriff um, Auditorium. And that's her, Beautiful. Donna Thompson. She was an athlete herself, a track runner from Chicago. Came over here and she uh, started the volleyball 
She mm -hmm. started women's track. She put UH women's athletics on the map. She got it funded. Um, she's she's a star. She was. She a star. is a star. And mm -hmm. you know, the one of the first things I've been here four years. One of the first things I noticed is how important volleyball is in Absolutely. Hawaii. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea the history. Well, okay. Yeah, they won had... all these national championships, and Donna Thompson made sure that they were able to do that. Thank so, you, Ms. Thompson. Yeah. So we have about two minutes left, oh, okay. so we only have one, two, three more pictures. All right. So let's take a look at those really quickly, and yes. then we're going to close out. Yes. All right. Um, this next is uh, Senator Maisie Hirono. Of course, she represents um, Hano, Oahu and uh, Hawaii, and she's the only female senator from this state right now. Before, we had uh, Colleen Hanabusa who mm -hmm. um, filled in for Akaka for a moment. Okay. And she uh, was also a congresswoman, but she's mm -hmm. no longer in office at the moment. We also have, um, as I mentioned before, Tulsi Gabbard, who is a congresswoman. But Maisie is the senator, the female senator. And oh, she's a very powerful voice in Washington, as we know. Um, and uh, she comes to a lot of events, like the Martin Luther King event. She's very pro-civil rights. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think, yeah, and Thank that's uh, myself. Believe it or not, with black hair, that was years ago. Um, and that's Maisie Hirono with black hair years ago. And that's my friend, uh, Sharon Yarbrough, who uh, still looks the same. <laughs> Amazing, she does. And in fact, Sharon has a show here, and um, it's Sister Power. We absolutely love that show. She is an amazing woman who does great work here in the community. and. Uh, as we close, I want to mention, I want to thank you for oh, being with it's us. It's my pleasure. I certainly hope to have you back again where you can share other great historical facts that maybe some of us don't know, don't get to hear about. So thank you so much. Oh, no, and I could just go on about your own accolades. You're uh, so modest. You didn't yeah. mention that you're a writer and an author and yeah. a historian, not historian. Her story. <laughs> I could go on and on and on. Oh, thank so you. hopefully we'll come back and we can brag about you a little bit. Yeah, and I hope <laughs> that all of you will do more research and find out all these wonderful women in history. That's right. Thank you again for watching. Before we go, I want to show you a special invitation from both Sharon Thomas Yarborough and Sisters Empowering Hawaii and the Keisha King uh, Organization Foundation. We are presenting a guided tour of the Shangri-La Museum of Islamic Art, Culture and Design on Saturday, April 13th, 2019 at 1.30 p.m. The cost is $25 per person and you can find out more information about this event uh, by following me or Sisters Empowering Hawaii on our Facebook pages or Sharon Thomas Yarborough's Facebook page, or you can contact us directly via any way that you have contact with us, including this flyer, which again is on Facebook. Um, and I'm just so excited about this because it is a wonderful, timeless experience of elegance and whimsical treasures. And it's a opportunity for women to get together, to network, and to embrace our power. So we hope to see you there. Now, registration does end. You can come back to me. Registration for this event does end this coming Sunday, March 10th. So please contact us right away. We have very few seats left available because as soon as people heard about this, in fact, you'll be there. You've already registered. Yes, I have. <laughs> yep. Um, but as soon as the women began to hear about this, they just signed on board right away. So I always want to thank you so much for your time and spending it with us right here at the Crossroads. And we'll see you next week live at 5 on Wednesdays. Aloha. Aloha.